I'm Gareth with Nanometer, and this is Ask Nanometer, your technical questions answered in plain English. Today's question, what is constant current and constant voltage, and why do some manufacturers use one over the other? Well, I would imagine a lot of people are going to be interested in this particular topic, because it's one that tends to get clouded by buzzwords and marketing by various people in the industry. So before we dig too deep, let's remember what it is that we're trying to do. And that is we're trying to light up some LEDs in a light fixture. Now, LEDs are inherently constant current semiconductors. So they're a bit more interested in the current running through them than they are the actual voltage. Reminder, if we were to liken uh, voltage and current uh, to a flowing river, the amount of water is going to be the current and the force at which it's flowing is going to be the voltage. So the name of the game here is to manage how much current is going to be flowing through each diode in our particular light. So if we were to use a constant current driver like the one in this beautiful fixture provided by Blackjack Lighting, thank you very much Blackjack Lighting, we can set the current at the driver so that each diode is going to receive a fixed amount of current, hence the name constant current. You see, if we give an unlimited current supply to the fixture. As the diode warms up, it's going to want to draw more current, and then it gets hotter, and then it wants to draw even more current, and this cycle continues and continues until the fixture ultimately catches fire, and we don't want that to happen. So perfect. Limiting the current supply at the driver seems to be a perfect way to manage it and stop stuff catching fire, so why would we really need to do anything else? Well, let's take a look at this circuit simulator. In this case, we have a 60 milliamp constant current source feeding 320 milliamp diodes, and everything's going swimmingly. As you can see, it's all lighting up perfectly. But as we add a fourth, or even a fifth diode, now that 60 milliamps is having to be shared amongst more diodes than we originally thought, and as a result, everything's getting dim. So, how do we manage a circuit when we don't know how many diodes are going to be attached? such as a cuttable linear strip, or, I don't know, nanometers nanotext backlighting solution. Bingo, constant voltage. In constant voltage, we can use a power supply that gives off a fixed voltage, and it will allow the circuit to pull as much current as needed up to the rating for that particular power supply. So if a power supply is rated for 24 volts at 4 amps, it allows us to draw power up to 96 watts. So let's see this again in a voltage simulator. Same setup, now I've got three diodes, they're all 20 milliamps each, and this time instead of connecting them to the current source, I've got them connected to this voltage source. As you can see this time, as I drag in my fourth, and now my fifth diode, and I add it to the circuit, the diodes are now just pulling the additional current that's required, and so that they're lighting up at the exact same brightness as they were as when there was three of them. So basically, we're using constant current when we know exactly how many LEDs we're running, and we're using constant voltage when we don't. Now there's some additional things that we need to do on the constant voltage side in order to manage the current, and that's why you need to make sure that you're working with a quality manufacturer that has the experience in designing the circuit so that you're not going to end up with problems like that thermal runaway and things like that that we were talking about previously. Anyway, that is the answer to the question in a nutshell. Don't forget to submit your questions to at nanoltg or to info at nanoltg.com. Cheers.